Oh, I was just on a video podcast the other day and it was talking about Rocket. And one of the things that always comes up when I talk about Rocket out of the wing T is that you you have to have some sort of horizontal stretch, right? And into that having that stretch opens things up for you on the inside. And the, the horizontal stretch plays, most horizontal stretch plays are not touchdown plays, but they're essential plays, right? So even if you, you need to get good enough at it that you can get positive yardage on a regular basis, but they're not gonna be your home run plays. I think sometimes as coaches, we go away from them and they're not turning into home runs. So wide zone, I'm curious about wide zone. I wanna know more. Welcome everybody, it is time for some Film Friday and today we've got a new guest coach that has shared some film. Again, I always commend the guys who are willing to share film because I think it's really hard to do. Um, but this is Sam Mallard out of Goose Creek, South Carolina. Let's see, so Goose Creek a year ago, let's look this up. Under head coach, it looks like Chuck Reedy, so long as Max Preps is right, which it's not always right. Um, but nine and three last year. They lost some close ones, look at that. Lost the opener 21-20. Lost in the middle of the season 31-14. Won two playoff games before they kind of got whooped a little bit by Carolina Forest. Um, so it looks like they had a really good season. That's Goose Creek. Let's look where Goose Creek is. I got it pulled up here on the map. There's, looks like it's just outside Charleston, South Carolina. Boy, I love it when you open it and you see green everywhere. I feel like this would be a really beautiful area. Looks like a, it's going to be a good sized high school, I got to believe. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know South Carolina football, but when I'm looking at a school that's like connected to a big city, that's where I start thinking like, I don't know, anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 students. And depending on how some states do it, I mean, you could have you could have 5,000 students. You know, I, I, I never think 5,000 student school is a very good idea. I feel like 1,000 students is the ideal school size. So there it is. Outside of Charleston, South Carolina, looks like beautiful country. Looks like a place I need to go. I have been to Columbia. I did a clinic there a couple years ago, but I've never been to Charleston. So let's watch some film. They're going to be here in black and white. And coach shared with me their run game. So we've got two playlists. One is all inside zone and one's all outside zone or wide zone. What's the difference? Comment below, please, because I don't know the difference, obviously. I've never been a zone guy. That's not entirely true. When we went eight man football, because we only had a th three linemen, really, right? I could bring a tight end in, but it's, I think it's hard to run gap schemes in eight man football because you just don't have, like you can't hardly create a three man surface. And the only p run scheme you get is if you bring in two tight ends, then you have a five, man, five lineman and you could run like power or counter, but I didn't want to have zero wide receivers, so I really felt like the best way to go was zone. And we went with um, like no combo block zones. We used, really we used the system, what's his name? Craig Bezia out of Homewood Flossmoor High School in Illinois. He's uh, one of the best coaches in Illinois and certainly an offensive mind. I think he's well known as that. But it, it is like one man, one gap. Like everyone's stepping right, right? So they'd name it like two or three. Two means everyone's stepping right. Three means everyone's stepping left. And then they would have a bunch of tags off that, right? So then with the tags, you could create all sorts of things. Maybe even create things like trap and, um, you know, you can obviously, and then use your H back in there. And that's what we were doing. So I have one year of experience with zone, inside zone. What we did not run is any outside zone. I do feel like if you're gonna be an inside zone team though, you have to, you almost have to have some sort of wide zone or outside zone. And uh, I actually was on, let me put this, remind me tomorrow. I've been hitting remind me tomorrow for about mm, two months. They are here in the black and white. That's Goose Creek. Again, we're looking at a good football team. And he sent me all run clips. So I'm probably gonna see them against several teams. Okay, so two by two. Um, and it, I don't even know yet what I'm gonna talk about when I go into these things. I don't even know like what's gonna be the topic, what's gonna be a theme. I just start watching film and see what comes up. So those of you who watch, I'm very grateful that you're willing to watch. 
All right, inside zone left, it looks like everything's kind of based off zone read. Everyone steps left. You guys see any combo blocks? I see no combo blocks. This is the block that I think is hard. And I, so I've always been a shoulder blocking team. And I think it's a, it is a philosophy thing. I acknowledge that I'm gonna get more control out of blocking with my hands. I'm gonna get more control. But with blocking with my shoulder, I'm getting more, how can I say, commitment. I'm getting more commitment out of my guy. I'm saying, go ahead and lean forward, go ahead and put your arm out, the old flipper, and we wanna commit and give a shot. So the shoulder gives you more commitment, the hands give you more control. So for us, we like going shoulder on the D-line and then hands at that second level. The problem is those second level blocks are so ridiculously difficult. So we're gonna watch this tackle here and he's trying to get up to this next level here and block a linebacker, right? I like the path that he takes. He's actually trying to get this linebacker. But you just watch how difficult, oh, I'm not, I was wrong. It's the guard. The guard here is gonna try to pick up this linebacker. And you just watch how, I mean, that is difficult. This is probably something, if I was an inside zone team, we would spend a lot of time on this second level because that second level is obviously so important because, well, that's their best defenders in most cases, right? You know, seven times out of 10, these guys are their best defenders. This kid misses and I'm guessing this kid gets, and it's his kid that really is the first man in on the tackle, right? So I'm curious just how do we get better at that block? Right? So number one, my thought is path, path. He looks to be attacking him straight on and he probably needs to take more at the path of where this guy, of where our back wants to go. That would give him a little bit of advantage. Take away the path. I feel like we have to take something off this kid's plate, right? So I feel like if you just put a guy out here, I'm gonna change the perspective. We're bird's eye view now. Picture me, bird's eye view. This is the defender here, solid yellow. This is me. I'm the blocker. I feel like if I come at a guy to block him and he's allowed, and I'm told just block him, he's allowed to go left or right. I have a difficult time. It is difficult to pick that, to, like he could go anywhere. And he plays middle linebacker for these guys, and I play right guard, which means the odds are he's a better athlete. I think it's difficult to, to win that battle, but I think that we could win it more if we told a kid, hey, I want you to attack here. Don't allow him to go here. If he beats you to the right, you're allowed to be beat there. We don't want you to be beat. Like, we'd like you to try, but if you do, you get beat, right? But don't get beat here. All right, so all that to, uh, and I fully acknowledge two things. Number one, I'm not an inside zone guy, so I don't even know if that's right. Number two, these guys might be teaching that, right? The, the, just because this kid doesn't take the great path doesn't mean it's not being taught. Because <laughs> again, he's human. He's human, we coach humans. Uh, but that's my first thought watching, the, watching this inside zone film. All right, so let's try to watch, maybe let's go three or four inside zone clips and we'll flip over and go three or four outside zone clips. And then we'll bring Coach Mallard on um, and we'll talk some ball with him. Again, part of this is difficult for me to get used to. You can see how vertical their stances are. They're so vertical, it's just the opposite of what I've always known, right? You, you know, if you study something or work on something for 10, 11 years and it's opposite, it doesn't mean it's wrong, it's just, it's, I'm uncomfortable. I'm all uncomfortable. But again, I don't know how much Goose Creek is trying to throw the ball or what their percentage run pass is. I, just, I, I feel like we're so straight up. That would be that would take some getting used to for me if I was going to become an inside zone team. Now this inside zone's different already because look, I've got the left tackle here. He's turning out. The right tackle is turning out to the right. So this is clearly not inside zone. Um, without any tags. Something is different here. I am getting a double team from my center and my left guard, and they double team, maybe it's not a double team. They, this left guard might be going for the inside linebacker while the center's going for the nose. It just looks like both guys attack the left A-gap. So it ends up looking like a double team, they step together. 
See, now, now I'm curious, just who's making this play? Is that that inside linebacker? Yeah, you look at this. So this inside linebacker comes and shoves his nose in here in the A-gap, bounces over the top of the nose, and makes this play. Right? It's one of those advantage slash disadvantage of inside zone. Advantage of inside zone for you is that they don't know where it's going. You don't even know exactly where you want it to hit. So it could hit anywhere. The disadvantage is the dis the, it could hit anywhere and my guard doesn't know exactly where I want to protect it. But at the end of the day, what difference does it make? Because this is a seven yard game, right? That, that's the beauty of inside zone. That's, that's, I think it would be so hard for me to get used to. It's like, it's imperfect. It's everyone's different. But again, if the result is plus seven, what the heck do I care if it was trap or it was in some sort of weird looking zone? What, what Seven is seven. All right, now they go, see, I find this interesting, really interesting. I, I'm so, I just, I'm, I'm anxious to get Coach Mallard on to figure out what their mindset is here because in, in generic, my, you know, a generic understanding of inside zone, Quarterback keeps it. So inside zone, backs offset left, we would block zone to the right. This guy would cross my face. My quarterback's gonna read, right? Last man on the line of scrimmage and quarterback rides and pulls. But in this case, quarterback read, rides and pulls, but the entire blocking is inside zone blocking left. So is this a planned keep? Surely it would be a planned keep, right? Because in what world, would you block inside zone left, show action at the right, and give right? I, I, I can't imagine a situation that that would be good in. And this works out real well, because you can also see, look how hard the, the linebackers, and they're even playing some sort of game up front here. I can't tell if this kid is playing a game or if he lined up out of position. <laughs> he might just be out of position and trying to sprint to the other DN spot. But watch both linebackers go with the back. There's a good call for a planned keep, right? We're gonna block left because they're only reading the running back. You guys see that? This mesh starts and both linebackers take off this way. If you can get away with sending your blockers left, and only have to send a running back this way to get the linebackers to go, that's a great, that's a great call. I, I'm curious to know if they run counter tray as well, um, or any gap schemes, or if they're, they're just inside zone, outside zone. Curious about this, I'll have to ask Coach Mallard. I love showing bubble here, because it holds this guy out. But once you show it, now what, right? Because now here comes this guy, he's running this way, and number eight looks lost. Right? I just wonder, are we better off like turning into a wheel and go and, and continuing to look like a threat? Are we, what are we better off doing with this kid, right? Because he looks a little lost at this point. Like, uh, should I help you? Should I not? Right? He's got to know at least, well, I can't help here. <laughs> Maybe I can help up here. Maybe I can go find that guy in case this springs. All right, one, si one more inside zone clip. Then we'll watch a couple outside zone clips. We'll, then we'll meet Coach Mallard. I hope I'm saying his name right. All right, now. Blocking's going left. Action's going right. Then the quarterback keeps and follows him right. Is this planned? Or is this just a dude being a dude? Like, it's go where, where you want, right? It doesn't work out that well, so there's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We gotta get Coach Mallard on. This is the part that it, it, whether, when, if the day comes that I become an inside zone guy, this is the part I want to win. And the coach at, what was his name, Jeremy? Okay, I'm back, figured it out. Thank goodness I went back and looked. It's Justin Robinson from Hanover College. It's in like, it's in Southern Indiana. The whole D-line presentation is really good. Here's the part that I loved the most. He had his lineman here, and he. this is a visual he used with his kids. He said, here is a grid, okay? Right now, they are in this grid, and we are not, right? So let's pretend my defensive end is here. He's at the front of the grid, you're not. What I want is for you to get a knockback, meaning I want your feet here, 
Right after the snap of the ball, I want your feet here and we're gonna push him back to here. We want to get into the grid, right? You're still on the line of scrimmage, right? You're not penetrating, but we need to win that grid back. I love that part of the presentation. That's a great visual for kids to understand. And that's the part that I feel like inside zone teams are giving up. I don't like giving that up. Again, fully acknowledging I could be totally wrong. I'm not a lifelong inside zone guy. I'm just not comfortable losing that battle and willingly losing it. And you see that we're losing that battle up front here as Goose Creek, hold up, hold up, go back to full screen. We're losing this knockback battle. We're losing that grid. That's valuable yardage that we're losing. And I'd like to win it. Inside zone teams, coaches, tell, help me out. Do you, how do you win that battle? Do you want to win that battle? Are you okay not winning that battle? All right, let's go over to some outside zone. Okay, outside zone. What differences do we see? Okay, I see one difference right away. Number 70 is looks to be trying to wheel his rear end toward that side, okay? So I can see that difference. I'm a little, a little surprised that I don't see more of a stretch out of this tackle. I feel like his inside zone step and his outside zone step look the same. I do see him, he looked to be, try, as he approached, watch 70 as he, or this tackle as he approached. As he approaches, he looks to be trying to turn that corner, but he does quickly lose it, right? He do, clearly does not win that edge. I'm assuming that if they are trying to want, run wide zone, that they would like to get, or at least give a, have a, give a better effort at trying to win that outside edge. I could be wrong though, I don't know wide zone. I don't know it. Could be wrong. Let's watch another one. Right, a ton of these could just be kids being kids, people being people, people mess up, people don't always execute exactly how you want. Okay, truth be told, right now, the blocking looks really similar, especially here on the left, right? Like, I just don't feel like my left tackle is, is giving a very good effort at trying to win this edge, right? If it's me, I'm wanting to, man, you, we need to go lateral. We gotta at least give a little bit of a shot at winning that edge. He's just taking this angle and like, hey, I lost the edge, I lost the edge, I'll shove you out now. I do see a little bit more effort, wide effort from the interior of the line. Right, and then obviously the biggest difference is the path of this running back. He's just crossing the face and running wide. Again, I never expect outside zone or stretch plays to go as big as inside zone plays, right? The, the strength of that inside zone is that that downhill path, power the cutback, you get them used, you get those linebackers used to scraping as that running back crosses his face, and now he crosses his face in that inside zone, cuts back, and that's where those big plays go, right? Right now, we've watched two or three outside zone plays, none of them are going for anything, right? But I don't understand the scheme yet, right? Obviously, he's crossing his face, we're allowing a run through, they get, this guy gets run through, I am sure that they're coaching it. They'd, they'd like to get this guy here, right? They gotta account for this. I'm assuming they're gonna go, hey, center, guard, and tackle, you guys need to account for these three guys right here, right? So how are we gonna get them? Well, he's clearly the least dangerous if we're trying to run outside zone, right? Let me run that back. If I'm looking at these three guys being the most dangerous guys against outside zone, who's the least dangerous? Well, it's clearly this kid. Number one, he's inside, he's like, He's closest to the ball, we're going wide. He has the least chance just by alignment to get there. Number two, of these three players, the least athletic of the three plays right here, right? He's there to stop inside zone. He shouldn't be able to stop that. So I feel like he's, we're gonna try to get, again, this is a non-zone coach, thinking through how it, thinking through some schematics of what the logic of the zone, outside zone would be. I'm thinking, get my center to this guy as best I can get my guard past that guard. He's got to almost run at the tackle in case these two are playing some sort of game. I'm gonna run at the tackle. Tackle steps outward. Now I'll continue on right here at this path to pick up that linebacker. And now this guy's gonna go outside, anticipating some sort of outside move. In this case, this guy stays outside. I'm gonna get outside him. That would be my rookie's thought process through this. 
Now, good job at that running back, not losing any yardage, turning it into just a, a zero game. And the best running back we ever had, Munchie, Montrell Moore, was the best at turning a garbage play <laughs> into at least no loss. I mean, that's a big deal when you got a good running back. And listen, there are good running backs that struggle at that skill. I think it's a skill. I do. I think it's a skill to take a nothing play and say, ooh, this is bad. Let me get back to the line of scrimmage and we'll live to fight another day. Because I'm, I've had good running backs that lacked that skill. They go, ooh, this play's bad. Can I turn it into something magical, right? Lose yards, lose yards, or lose five. And Montrell Moore, Munchie, that dude did not lose yards. It was, it was, it was like the second he got that ball, he's going, not good. Let me get back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Fight through guys, bounce off, get back to the line of scrimmage. And we were much better for it. So I know kids don't usually watch this, but if you happen to be a running back and you're watching this, keep that in mind. That's a skill. Dude, I, I told kids, I tell running backs, don't think about getting yards. Think about getting carries. How do you earn more carries? Number one, I protect the football, right? I'm coachable. I keep me in the game because I block well. I, I protect the football. Number two, I don't lose you yardage, right? So coach, run a play to me because you know you're not going to lose yardage. Best, worst case, worst case scenario, I get zero. That's a dude that keeps earning carries. The more carries you get, listen, the yards will be there. You're a good athlete. You're a good athlete. You don't have to worry about the big plays. They'll come. You just get more carries, get more touches. How do I earn more touches? This running back's good. You can see that different path, wide path, then he gets north-south. This turns into a great run, and that's a, that's a great running back being hard to tackle. That's physical downhill football by that kid. Great job, too, by the center. Look at the center. Pick this up. Kid wants to go backside of me, which obviously I want. We're going that way. And he just keeps his feet moving and runs it. I like it. I like it. Let's meet Coach Mallard and get his input on some of this. Because I've already said I don't know what the heck I'm doing like 50 times. All right. We've got Coach Mallard in the house. Sam Mallard. Coach, how can we find you on Twitter? What's your Twitter handle? Uh, my Twitter handle is uh, Coach underscore Mallard, at Coach underscore Mallard. There you go. Find him on Twitter. He is the O-line coach and run game coordinator at Goose Creek. And we were debating before, how big is your high school? Uh, we got, depending on what time of year, between 16 and 1900 students. Okay, I was pretty close. I was pretty close. I was just basing on where, I, where it was located. Um, and do you teach in the school? I do. Uh, I teach social studies. Okay, good for you, man. And Coach was telling us his third year at Goose Creek and his seventh year overall coaching, and he grew up in Rock Hill? Rock Hill. Yes, sir. Or was it Rock Hills with an S? No, nope, Rock Hill, no S. Rock Hill, which the, he said Football City, USA, home of a bunch of former NFL players. Uh, well, Coach, we're glad to have you on. I'm going to share my screen. We're going to watch a little film with you. Right. And uh, we'll call it a day. So here I go. Let me hit this. All right, you got me? I got you, Coach. All right, let's go full screen. We're watching some outside zone clips here. Let's go to the next one. Now, one thing, and I'm going to go, that's the tight version of the last one, looks mm -hmm. like. Okay, so here you guys are in the black. One thing I noticed, and you tell me if this is planned. So this is the wide zone section of cut clips. Okay. So my running back path's coming here. Yes, sir. This right tackle seems to be just giving up the edge quickly and running this guy out. Is that part of the plan, or how uh, is this right tackle being coached? Definitely. So it's uh, it's really like kind of it's more wide zone. So that tackle is going to take three steps, right? And if that defender wants to stay outside, fine. We'll we'll let you go outside all day, right? The running back is going to take the ball. He's going to do one cut. He's going to put his foot in the ground, reading that tackle. And then if the tackle's hips are turned out, he's cutting it up. If the tackle's obviously hips are turned in, he's running on, running outside. Okay, so tell me how that would differ from if you were running inside zone. What's he okay. being coached on inside zone? So inside zone, it's more uh, the running back. We're going to coach him up to uh, read the center's block. So okay. wherever the center takes his man, 
Okay. Um, is where he's going to dictate where he runs. Now, so is the tackle's the job the same in both? Is the yeah, well, the tackle's job in inside zone is to not get beat across his face. So okay. his sole goal is to make sure that that defensive end does not beat him across his face. Okay, so in outside zone, we want you to step outside. If he wants to stay outside, fine, take him. In inside zone, you're saying you must keep him outside. You must keep him outside, yes. Okay, so it's just a different, so they could, in theory, the two could look the same the whole game, in theory. They, not necessarily because of the running back's path. He's more, and it's kind of dictating where, where he's reading as well, right? So we're running. Yeah, yeah, for him. Outside. But for, like, let's say just for that tackle's sake, it could look the same for the tackle the whole game. It could, yeah. It, okay. it could definitely look the same. All right, I'm understanding that. You know, it's interesting because I was telling somebody, we were talking about buck sweep. And people were talking about setting an edge for buck sweep. And I always said, if you take this outside linebacker, if you set this edge too soon or too high, then in reality, they have the edge. They are outside. They're outside of our defense, whether they went inside or outside of this man to get there, right? Like. Once they get outside, so that, that I guess it's that same concept running outside zone is saying, listen, if he wants to go outside, we run him out and we go inside of him first and then we're back outside. What difference does it make how we got outside? We're outside now. Could be, yeah. And so he's going to read that tackle Ooh. block and then immediately he's going to look at that guard's block. Okay. So as you can see, the guard is doing the same thing. He's pushing him out and he cuts right up under that guard. It's a pretty good game there. Now, the, the thing about this for me is, and I wonder how as an offensive line coach, so I feel like for me as an offensive line coach, being a gap scheme guy, I feel like it's easier for me to define what it is I need you guys doing. Do you guys ever find any cloudiness in, hey, in, when you're teaching your O-linemen, do you ever find any cloudiness in what you're trying to get them to do? Uh, I don't I haven't figured, I haven't seen that problem yet. We, I mean, we rep, I mean, as you can see, I shared our run game with you. We run, we run three run plays. You know? Okay. I mean, we get a thousand reps a day at the three run plays. So, you know, there's no, hey coach, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. Hey yeah. Coach, what's the 10th run play? Well, we don't have one. So. <laughs> That makes sense. So tell me how this guard's being coached up. It's wide zone. So he's being taught the exact same thing as the tackle, except for, so as you can see, his play side shoulder's free. And since his play side shoulder's free, he's gonna run to the linebacker and perform the exact same block. Okay. If that linebacker wants to go outside, just take him outside. If he wants to sit in there uh, on the inside, then the guard will just reach him. And then that hole, as opposed to him cutting behind the guard will be in front of the guard now. Okay. See, I mean, and that's why, thank goodness, I started to get the guy who shared the film on with me because had I not brought you on with me, I'd have had no idea. I was trying to, um, I was just trying to visualize how in theory, again, thinking with a gap scheme mind, in theory, how would I try to block outside zone? And it was different than how you are actually blocking it. Mm -hmm. So in this case, boy, look at this kid come. That's a blitzing linebacker comes screaming across your center's face. Or no, that's a backside guard's face. Yeah. So that's your center. Would you have liked your center to pick that up or you're good, you're happy that he left it? So uh, yeah, I'm fine that he left it because his play side shoulder's free. So if his play side shoulder's free, he's always gonna leave. Now what that backside guard should have done is just cut that guy and make yeah. his life easy. But He's, he's just taking his steps, but that guy's running full speed. Out of yeah, I mean, the kid still doesn't make the play, so technically they make the block, right? Technically. Yeah, no harm, no foul. <laughs> That's it, right. So I grade it. If you, do, if you do your job and your guy doesn't touch the ball carrier, you get a plus. So, so I was talking earlier. Let's go. Well, I'll wait till we go to inside zone. I want to talk knockback with you. Um, but we'll talk that in a minute. All right, we're gonna go, let's go maybe one or two more outside zone clips, wide zone clips, and then we'll go back to some inside zone. All right, come on, wide zone this way. See, this, 
This is what surprises me. You're blocking wide zone this way and your right tackle is going left. Right, so for me, again, in my brain, my world of trying to stretch horizontally, it's like baffling. But look at your right tackle, you know, he is. But that D end does this. Yeah. So tell me how you, how would you like that tackle to handle that, right? He's, you can tell he's pretty surprised by it. Yeah, so he takes his, he takes his correct step, right? So he steps with his right outside foot and then he's, his defensive end goes across. So what he's thinking right now is that that, three technique is going to come across his face. Okay. It's the game of, you know, the twist on the inside. So what he's thinking is, hey, my guy's going away. Somebody else is coming across. Now, in reality, I would have liked him to just work up to that linebacker when his guy goes away. Right. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. But listen, I certainly understand. It's like, hey, here's what we'd like you to do. Yeah, you didn't get it done. I mean, that happens in my world all the time. Like, by, play by play, I'm going, hey, I would have liked you to have... Okay, so you would have liked for him to pick up that linebacker. Oh, Do you yes. guys rep this a decent amount in practice where it's like, hey, we're going wide zone. We're going to see this game real quick. Let's practice picking that up. Are you guys practicing picking up different movements and games? Oh, all, all the time. So we, we, so we have an a inside, obviously inside zone period. Right. And then uh, I send blitzes at them and then we'll do a, a blitz pickup and I'll send blitzes at them. And we go from full speed reps to as the week progresses, we kind of pull it down and just make sure mentally that they still can see who. Now, the team that we're playing right here is uh, we, we actually did, we were actually running it pretty well. And as you can see, they got seven guys in the box and we're trying to block. Mm -hmm. Seven with five because we, we did do a pretty good job in, in the first half of just running it on them. So I think they came out and they were like, look, we aren't going to run it on us anymore. Right. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally just zeroed up. Yeah. They're going to cover zero here. And yeah, that's going to be hard to run against. So I'm assuming, I'm sure shortly after you guys went to something else. Oh, yeah. And it looks like you guys must have a be very good running the ball because everybody seems to be stacking the box against you guys. Well, yeah. So this, yeah, this team does the same thing. But see, this is the the luxury of wide zone is it doesn't matter, right? So the tackle gets a reach. Now I wish he would have stayed on, but he doesn't. The play side sure. guard is leaving because his play side shoulder's free. So the hole is going to end up between that right, the left tackle and that left guard, which it does, it opens up. Yep. Now, the guy who makes the tackle is the, is the backside linebacker in the bare front. So like, I mean, we can't. Right. And I love number 70 here. What a great job he does staying on this block. Oh yeah, I mean, he's gonna be a good one, man. He's, he's only a sophomore right now. Wow, that's a big boy. How big is that kid? Oh, he's uh, right now, he's about, 295, 300. <laughs> and obviously your running back is very talented too. Oh yeah, man, that guy, he's special, man. Wow. We got two of them, see, I don't know if you noticed, man, we got four and nine and uh, they look very similar. I hadn't even looked at their numbers yet, nope. Is this the same kid as the last one or is this, is this was the last one four? Uh, the last one was four and then this is nine. Wow. All right, so here we are. Wide zone, 55. This guy decides to go inside now. Yep. Boom. 70 moves up to the second level. And his guy goes inside, so he just takes his guy inside, and then there's nobody there. Jeez. It's so strange to me. This is so foreign to me. Just zone concepts, right? I mean, I defend it a lot. But thinking through trying to move the ball with it, it's so weird for me to have so many, well, if he wants to do this, fine. If he wants to do this, fine, right? Like that's a that's weird for me. But yeah, obviously, and I said it earlier before I brought you on. I said, um, you know, I said like, look at this play. This happened and this happened and this happened and that didn't go the way we wanted it. And this didn't go the way we wanted it. But we gained seven yards. So what the heck difference does it make, yeah. <laughs> right? At the end of the day, it's difficult to defend. Yeah, so, that's, I mean, 
That's that's what we're looking for. Like every play looks different. So it's like, well, did my guy do this right? Mm, technically, yes. Like, right? I feel like I, the cool thing about that as a coach, and I'm starting, I'm going on a tangent here. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but the cool thing about that as a coach is it forces you to look more at what happened before the block happened rather than just the end result, right? Because it's saying, hey, did you step with the correct foot? Was your path correct? Was, were your hands correct, right? And, and whatever happened after that, we can't get on you for, right? But we're gonna, these are the coachable things, right? Whereas in some other circumstances, you're, you're just looking at the end result. Exactly. And it's, uh, so we have a, uh, we call it like a block recognition. So like a one-on-one, -on -one, so we could run or we could pass depending on, you know, whatever in practice. And when I call this play, you know, the defensive line coach is always like, good job, you, you set the edge. And I'm like, coach, we're, we're trying to push him out. <laughs> and then sometimes, you know, they, they come inside and they sit inside and he's like, all right, good job, you got, you got your gap. I said, oh, coach, we're running outside. <laughs> and so the, the kids have picked up like, I can't be right, this, is, this, this doesn't count. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. You'll, you'll, you'll never be right as a defense. You know? Right. That's why it's effective. It, yeah, again, it's such, it really is foreign okay. thought to me, but that is why it's effective. So let's talk about um, this knockback principle. Um, and the knockback principle, I'm just going to get to a good, yep, this will work. All right. So the knockback principle comes from, I just, it was really new vocab to me. Um, a month, about a month ago, maybe two, three weeks ago, we had a guy that did our a home clinic on our YouTube channel. His name's Justin Robinson. He's out of Hanover College in, um, Southern Indiana, his D-line coach there. He did a really great job on his D-line presentation. The presentation is excellent. I couldn't recommend it more. But he talks about this grid, right? So if we we want, he like draws up the O-line, the line of scrimmage as a grid, right? Like rather than the line of scrimmage being a line, it being like an, an area. And he wants to win the knockback. He calls the knockback, right? That the, see the O-line starts at the front of the grid. And we just want as a defense, for you to knock him back to the back of the grid and we'd like to put your feet in the front of the grid right like we want part of that we want part of that grid back as a d-line we want we want that grid back right so for me coming from a gap scheme world and we're under center too so you know we really like we're i'm coming like I want to like win, you know, I want to, I want to run our feet, right? We want to just win as much of that as we can. We're really just kind of, in some ways, we're a little kamikaze with it. Whereas inside zone is much different mindset. Are you okay with your old lineman losing some ground here? So I, I would rather uh, them not lose ground, right? But I mean, my big thing is I'm not necessarily trying to get them to get a whole bunch of like, hey, I'm, you know, 210 and I'm going to take that guy who's 310 and I'm going to move, you know, I would rather that guy decide which way he wants to go, right? So if he wants to go to his right, then we're going to move him to his right, right? And then our running back, so I tell my guys this all the time, I got it from my college coach, that running back has to get paid too, right? I mean, we... We, we can't do everything for him. <laughs> right. So when we move that guy, now it's fine, you know, if you don't, I, I would love it if that guy just took him and he took him, you know, 15 yards down the field, which right. we, we have some clips of that, right? But I mean, sure. I get, that's not going to happen every time. Right. You know? So, but now if we do get movement, lateral movement is, is just as good as full-fledged vertical move. Okay. I like that mindset. And you know, it is, as a coach, you just have to decide, okay, here's what we're deciding to do, and here's what's most important to us, right? And what fits what we're doing. So in my gap scheme, I want my guys coming off so hard. Let's say this was a down block on this tackle. I want my tackle coming off so hard that if he misses, if you run the path we need you to run, and you miss because he moved, we're okay with that, but you better launch off that ball. Whereas zone is saying, listen, you just can't miss, right? We, 
you have to come off you the rule number one instead of coming off is you can't miss right like even if you lose some ground or you don't win ground in order to not miss you just can't miss take him where he wants to go but you can't miss it's just changing that priorities and both like what i do wouldn't fit as what the way you're trying to move the ball and what you do coaching the o-line wise wouldn't fit the way i'm trying to move the ball it's just like it's literally two families of two different families of offensive mindset and thought and how to move the ball. Exactly. But both move the ball. So that's the part that I would have to get used to going, hey, yeah, you're not gonna come off as physically as as that wing T team does. But what difference does it make when we're gaining the same amount of yards or more yards, or, you know? Now I would like now 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 we are physical now. Don't I don't I don't want you to think of since we're a spread team we're not physical. <laughs> definitely. We are physical now. Definitely. And I definitely don't cloud that. I do not cloud being physical with saying I'm okay losing ground, right? Like cuz you just can't, I've always said you just can't. Like if, if you don't put your hand on the ground, you just can't launch forward the same way as if you do. Right? I mean your first step just is you can't go forward as fast, right? Otherwise, Usain Bolt in the 100, he would have just started standing up, right? He, I gotta put a hand down if I'm gonna go forward harder, right? So it's just a difference of priorities. Definitely not a difference of toughness. Gotcha. I've definitely never clouded the two. Now we already saw that clip. Let's watch one or two more. I'm gonna go forward a few, I'm gonna go forward several to just make sure we're into a clip I haven't seen yet. Okay. Now you guys, are you guys run a ton of two by two? Would you say that's the, how much, how often are you in two by two? Uh, we do run a bunch of two by two, uh, a bunch of three by one. I mean, just. Whatever, and then when it comes to uh, throwing the ball, what, what are some of your guys' main, uh, when you guys are taken to the air, what are some of the main concepts? Uh, so we're air raid. So we're just gonna run, you know, shallow cross, we run smash stick. Okay, so you guys are throwing the ball like crazy. And see, that's, oh, the, that's yeah. the thing. And that's what, so I had my my buddy who works with Chief Pigs and Dylan Mack, we reviewed his film and he's an air raid guy. He said, listen, you know, we throw the ball 70% of the time. He said, so 70% of the time, my guy's losing ground, right? He's like, so yeah, I'm not, I'm okay with that, right? And I feel good about when we were, we were talking about the same knockback principle, right? He's like, hey, 70% of the time, we're okay with this. We're coming backwards. So yeah, maybe we're not gonna be as good as you, as you at coming downhill. Um, but again, same thought, we went through the same thing. But at the end of the day, our seven yards look just like your seven yards. Seven yards is seven yards, look at this. And, and again, same thing, inside zone. This play, you're telling me he's reading the center's block but he ends up way the heck out here in C gap. Yeah, he, he he does a little bounce. Yeah, that's that's true. Our our uh, right tackle over there looks like he missed his block. Okay. Which uh, the, it should have been. So we use a count system. Okay. In, inside zone. So the and we have like zero, one, and two, and then negative one and negative two, and everybody's responsible for their individual number. Oh, okay. So who's zero, one, and two in this? So the zero, uh, play it real quick. Uh, I'm not sure which way we're going. All right. So in this instance, the left middle linebacker. Was yeah. Zero. This guy. And the center is going to be responsible for him. So that's zero. That's zero. Okay. The and then who's one? one? He's one. That D Tackles tackle. one. D end is two. Two. Okay, and then this guy is minus one? Minus. Or is the tackle minus one? Min he's minus one. The tackle? Yes, sir. Okay, and he's minus two? Minus two. And then this guy, we don't care about. Well, he, uh, he's minus three. If we had a tight end, then the tight end would be. Okay, one. sure, sure, okay. So, now everybody knows who they're responsible for. Zero, one, two, okay. Now they end up trading off. Like I can see the center ends up picking up this tackle and the guard looks like he's stepping to the tackle and then bounces off and goes to the, to the, to the linebacker. 
That's true because that's that's his man, right? So that so the so the nose tackle is the guard's man. But now right. it's a it's a fluid situation, right? So when the ball is snapped, that linebacker comes screaming downhill. Now he becomes the one, and that D tackle just becomes the zero. So they, boy, they look at your left guard just. And this is a sophomore. Look at your left guard just eat up this linebacker. Yeah, he's pre he's pretty good, coach. Goodness. And then who ends up making the play? That's that backside uh, middle linebacker. Yeah, so, so I'm just trying to I'm trying to like teach this to myself right now, thinking like, okay, who's responsible? So this was minus one. Minus no, two. he was minus one. Mm -hmm. So you were hoping that this guy would be responsible for him. So again, it's a fluid situation, right? So since that guy comes inside, now the guard is responsible for him. Okay. That makes sense. And this team right here is really, really run like triggered. So like yeah. as soon as there's any run action, as you can see, look, those linebackers are. That's, yeah, that's downhill linebackers. I love that. And again, and then that kid just, the kid is there. He just is there a split second late, just barely. If, if that, if your right linebacker. guard gets to him just that much earlier, that kid can't make that play. Yeah, that linebacker's pretty good. Yeah, oh, I can tell, man. He comes through that block and makes the play. And that's going to happen. You know, they're good, too. <laughs> they play good football, too. All right, let's make this the last one. I like good. I'm glad we got a quarterback keep on the last one. Are you guys reading it? Or is this called? Yeah, so we're going to, so we are going to read it depending on how many are in the box, right? So right now, it looks like there's six in the box. And yeah, look, you guys keep getting that. Do you guys see a ton of zero coverage? Well, it depends on. I mean, what, they don't have a soul back here. Depends on what we're doing up front. So if we're doing really well, then uh, we, we have seen a lot of teams go zero on this. this yeah. Match. Now, look at this. Look at the see. Look and, and, and again, make sure we give you guys love. I'm talking about that knockback. You get a great a great get off here by your center and guard on this one. Look at that, you see that? I mean, that's when, boom! Look at that, center snaps the ball and watch the pop he gives that kid. Boom! I like that. Oh yeah, man, that guy was, he was good for it. He was a senior, man. 210, but mean. Yes. Now, see, here's what's interesting. It looks like, so you guys get, you go action here, he keeps it and he's going straight down the heart of this. Is he um, is he being coached to do that, or is it just go where you see room? So this is actually a um, quarterback inside zone, right? So the, okay. the, the run action is not like that. It doesn't even mean anything. Right? Okay. So we're trying to block everybody. Like we can't block number eighteen. Like that's you know right. We got five guys. That's number seven. You know? Yeah. So he, he, he's running, the quarterback is running into his correct route, right? So he's looking at the center, right? So the center's hips are going left. So naturally, the quarterback is going to go to the right. Okay, right? so it's a called inside zone to your quarterback. quarterback. That makes sense. Now, how about your right tackle there? Because your right tackle turns out, I would have expected him, if it was a called inside zone left, to also go left. What makes him take, is it because... The inside zone with a quarterback hits slower, so you have to account for that D end. Right, so remember, we're using the count system. Yeah. So that guy is negative two in the count. Because there's nobody else here. Because there's nobody else there, so he's negative two. And then remember, the rule is you can't get beat across your face. Right. So he is making sure by his first step, so he's taking a 45, um, Yep, he's taking the perfect 45. He's making sure he does not get beat across his face. Right. Which is perfect. That's what I want. Same thing with the right guard. He's he's making sure he's not getting beat across. Now he does eventually get beat across his face because his feet stop moving. But at the same time, he is trying his best to make sure he doesn't get beat across his face either. I like it. Man, coach. I feel like I learned something about inside zone today. I think this is gonna, this, uh, I'm gonna be interested myself, and you're gonna, when you watch this, um, when I edit this and put this together, 
you're gonna you're gonna watch it and you're gonna see like what I was thinking beforehand. Again, being clue really pretty clueless to like true inside zone coaching it up, and like how I'm thinking through. Are they trying to do this? Are they trying to do this? And then now you come on and I learn how you're doing it. It gives me a whole new perspective. I'm not gonna lie. That's really one of the first times I've really sat down to learn some inside zone. I like it, coach. You're doing a great job at Goose Creek. And have you guys started football yet this se- this summer? We have not. We're still waiting on uh, so the our high school league let every let all the districts choose, and the districts are uh, they're debating right now. I think there's supposed to be an announcement today by our district letting us know more of the parameters and stuff. So we're just, we're just playing the waiting game. Yeah, we're in the exact same boat, man. I got a son who's uh, about to be a junior. And we're just waiting. I mean, I mean, just chomping at the bit. I'm an assistant on staff, and it, the same thing. Like, and none of us can really make plans. We're like, well, will we be busy next week? Yep. Nobody knows. Well, coach, I loved having you on. Uh, any closing thoughts here before we sign off on Film Friday? Anything in the football you were seeing you wanted to mention, or anything? I mean, not, I really appreciate you having me on, coach. I mean, this this is my first time being on a on a you know little clinic here so I hope, hope it did well I hope you know get some raving reviews well I'm sure you'll get great reviews you did a great job man and it is it is cool to kind of like for the first time get out and kind of talk through what you're thinking as a coach and um, it's a cool opportunity I n- it never gets old to me when people invite me and they they're like thank you so much for your time I'm like are you kidding this is like the most fun thing I could do to have somebody ask me what I think right Oh, yeah, it was nice, man. Definitely. It's cool to have people ask what you're thinking. <laughs> well, best of luck to you guys at Goose Creek, man. Um, I'll, of course, I'll tag you when this comes out. And um, all you guys at home, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll catch you here again next week. And look up Coach Mallard at Coach underscore Mallard, right? Look him up. Give him a follow on Twitter. We'll catch you guys next week. <laughs>